fall day in New England. The New England Patriots have won the toss. So Morton Anderson will kick off for the Atlanta Falcons. Derek Cullors and Chris Canty are back deep for the Patriots. Cullors, the primary return man, is on the left. New England 5-3, one of four teams tied for first in the AFC East. Falcons even with the Niners in the NFC West. And it's returned by Derek Cullors on the 10-yard line. Changes direction. And oh, it's tripped baby. up and a flag goes down. Colors uh, would have had a lot more had he not been tripped up by Randy Fuller. And our referee is uh, Phil Luckett, and he'll explain the flag. It is against New England, and that will nullify a good portion of that fine return. So Drew Bledsoe coming into the quarterback, and uh, Matt explained how important he is to the Patriot cause today. No other passer in the AFC has thrown for more yardage th thus far. Armstrong, Lane, Willabar, Rucci, and Moss, the offensive line. And they have done a good job in protecting Bledsoe. Robert Edwards, the sensational rookie running back. Tony Simmons, the rookie who starred last week as a wide receiver. And Ben Coates, their number one target, the tight end. Pat starting from the 19. Bledsoe to go to the air on first down on the first play of the game, and the pass is caught by Ben Coates, who caught 10 passes in a touchdown last week against the Colts in a gain of six. Defensively, John Burrow, Lester Archambault, Shane Dronette, and Chuck Smith, Bennett, Tuggle, and Henri Crockett, who has been out six weeks, he'll start at linebacker. Ray Buchanan, Eugene Robinson, William White, and Michael Booker still playing in place of Ronnie Bradford out with a knee injury. And there is Travis Hall. There's the Dronette. We will see Travis Hall before long. He's been out with a knee injury. Second down and four. And here is Robert Edwards giving ground. And Booker coming in from the secondary, making the tackle and a loss on the play of a couple. So you look at the New England Patriots right now, and you know they're depleted in their wide receiver core. They still have to throw the ball because you can't be one-dimensional. Now, Robert Edwards is, has been a strong rookie, but he's, he's got a ways to go. He's finding himself as he goes. This game still goes back to Drew Bledsoe. And if he's going to have success, he's going to have to use some of the wide receivers, but it's also going to have to come from Ben Coates' tight end, a chain mover today. And I mentioned Travis Hall, and he's been out with a knee injury, but he's in the game now at defensive tackle on third and seven. Out of the shotgun is Bledsoe, and he gets a rush. And Lester Archambault coming in, gets the sack for the Atlanta Falcons. Another loss on the play of eight yards, and it's fourth down. Uh, Eugene Robinson is maybe only, he's one of the smartest guys in the field, and he understands exactly what Ben Coates means. And so you take that away first. Then he has to look outside to Jefferson. Ray Buchanan just all over him. And then when you're looking down the field, trying to get some, that can't happen. There comes your sack. So Tom Tupper will kick from inside his five-yard line. Todd Kinchin, who suffered a concussion last week against the Rams, but recovered enough to start. And they fumble, and they say the ball was blown dead, so it'll still be Falcons' ball. And they'll get it in New England territory after the 40-yard punt by Tom Tupa and a close call for Atlanta. And Kinchin's getting up a little dazed. I'm surprised he's even out there after the shot he took last week. He took a tough shot. So Chris Chandler, very impressive with a 12-3 and record in his last 15 starts at quarterback. Whitfield, Collins, Tobek, Williams, and Ephraim Salam. The offensive line for Atlanta, Jamal Anderson, the sensation this year, and Terrence Mathis and Tony Martin, two brilliant wide receivers. Two tight ends start for the Falcons on the Patriot 46. Jamal Anderson on his first foray of the game picks up about four yards. New England on defense, and uh, they have shuffled that uh, defensive line. Rookie Greg Spires getting the start at defensive end. Willie McGinnis inactive today. The linebackers, Slade, Ted Johnson, and Todd Collins. Pretty good threesome there. And the secondary with Ty Law and Lawyer Malloy. There is Willie McGinnis who leads the team in sacks. He's been their best pass rusher, but he's out for the third game. Second and five, Bob Christian is in as the up back. Lawyer Malloy walked up right away. 
Chandler on the screen pass, and it's caught by Christian, the fullback, and a first down. Bob Christian stays in bounds, and Christian gets down where a flag is thrown to the one-yard line. He did not go out of bounds and ended up with a 40-yard gain before Law and Canty saved the touchdown. That, that's amazing, really, because that could have been an interception right at the start. It was well defended, but Chandler just kind of sifted it right through. A face mask at the end of that play. Watch Christian number 44. See, he's going to go through and then back outside. Now, right there, Wheeler knew it. He felt it. The lineman tried to get his hands down and did that and allowed it allowed him to get all the way down. A nice job out there by, by Calvin Collins and a poor job by Willie Clay of not wrapping his arms. Watch his feet right along the sideline. Ooh, I don't know. He may have been out up top there. They had an official, though, Matt, right on the line to see, and he did not. So it is first and goal for the Falcons on the one. They have three tight ends in the game. Jamal Anderson gets hit at the line. And his second effort, good for the touchdown. It is a touchdown. I don't hear a whistle. I don't hear a whistle. No, the That's touchdown good. is signal. Oh, that, there you go. The TD right, was right. signal. It's a score. This will not count. That's good, Dick, because if you, if you notice, five of the six officials didn't do anything. The one official put his hands up when he saw the plane broken, and it'll be six points. And that's all he had to do is break the plane. Crowd, of course, uh, hoping it was a fumble, but it was not. Wheeler gets himself a jump. This is all in Jamal Anderson. is just kind of sliding and getting back. He's through. Now, once he's passed, once he's broken that plane, that's six. Number five. Ted Johnson got his hand in there, but he had already broken that plane. And let's see the reaction. Jamal Anderson knew he was over and, of course, backed up by the official. We well, see that the line judge there, he's just kind of... He, he, he wasn't sure. No, they all weren't. One man, the head linesman, was right on top of it. So the Falcons take an early lead, 6 to nothing, and Morton Anderson for the extra point. And the Falcons have taken a 7-0 lead. The big play was the 40-yard catch and run by Christian, but a hard-working touchdown. He crossed the plane. Jamal Anderson gives the Falcons the 7-0 lead. Well, the best way to silence an enemy crowd is to score quickly. Bob Christian on the big 40-yard pass and run on the screen pass, setting up Jamal Anderson's one-yard touchdown run. His seventh touchdown of the year rushing in the Falcons with an early 7-0 lead. Patriots will get the ball as Morton Anderson kicking off for the second time. Jared Cullors and Chris Candy in this ball returned by Cullors from the end zone. Jared Cullors trying to turn the corner and he is tripped up and down by Devin Bush. I think the whole thing is set up by Bob Christian and, and, and a nice job there of one block and Collins in the second block and in a poor job of tackling. Christian keeps his feet and that's the big play. And then I want you to listen for the whistle on this play. It, you're not going to hear it and the reason you're not is the instant that that plane was broken by the ball, it's six and it becomes dead. Play is over. So Ty Law trained. He doesn't hear the whistle, picks up the ball. And Absolutely. Run. You have to play to the whistle, except on the goal line, it's dead. Starting from the 25, Drew Bledsoe getting rushed. And a fumble. And the Falcons get it. A turnover, and the Atlanta Falcons get another one. And it was Dronette and Chuck Smith who forced the fumble. And the Patriots unable to keep the Atlanta Falcons defense out. I think John Burroughs, the guy in the bottom of that pile, but Jonette, like you said, and Chuck Smith, Smith uh, put the pressure on. But more than that, watch but Chuck Smith and Burroughs and uh, Jonette outside. It's just called an, an ET. It's a stunt. And because there was no place to throw down the field, the coverage was there. Certainly he had time to dump it off quick. He's looking the whole way. He's looking to his left, but there's no place to throw. And then Burrow is able to come in and pick up the fumble. And another golden opportunity for the Falcons on the New England 16. 
Two tight ends with Santiago and Kozlowski. And here is Jamal Anderson, and Anderson getting inside the 15 for a minimal game. Ted Johnson, the middle linebacker, making the stop. By the way, that touchdown allowed by the Patriots was only their first rushing score allowed since game one against the Denver Broncos. And he ran right under the arm or through the arm of Ted Johnson, who personally I believe is the best inside linebacker in this league. I think he's as good as it gets. Woo! You got a lot of support for that opinion. Here's Johnson, second and eight. And the pitch to Jamal Anderson looking to throw on the option. Jamal Anderson threw it away, and that was a smart play by the running back because the Patriots had covered the Falcon receivers well. Well, he was looking for Mathis, number 81, down the field, and a nice job of being smart. First, by Lawyer Malloy, and then Chris Candy was hanging back there also. And then if that guy's not there, you've got to look back underneath, but he wasn't able to find it because Ty Law was all over him. And if you listened in our pregame show to Pam Oliver's profile of Jamal Anderson, he said, look, I want to do anything. I'll throw it, run it, block, whatever you ask me to do, I just want to win. Henry Thomas has checked in on the defensive line, three-man front for the Patriots on third down and eight. And there is Chandler's pass. It's caught at the five by Terrence Mathis and close to a first down. And the Falcons leading seven to nothing, and they have played the early minutes entirely in New England territory, and they get a new set of downs as well. They went with uh, they went with an eight-man coverage. They only rushed three. When you don't have a pass rush, and your best pass rushers are standing on the sideline. Then you have to be creative. You have to either do blitzes, which puts pressure on your on your man-to-man -man corners, or you have to just give a lot of people back there with blitz, with uh, zone. They're back to the four-man defensive line, first and goal at the six, and a mix-up, a box play, and the Chandler just covers up and drops and uh, loses about a yard. Well, he, I, I believe Jamal Anderson went the wrong way, and because what happens is he's supposed to go go this way. Because he's going to turn this way. The quarterback going to turn this way and fake and then come back the other way. You know I know? He stole this play from the New York Jets. Bill Parcells was running that very play. And uh, and I saw it on tape and I asked Dan Reeves. and said, hey, if anything works, I'll steal it in a second. He's not above doing that if it works. Second and goal, the ball at the seven. Chandler going up the middle and the pass is caught for the touchdown. O.J. Santiago, the tight end, with a seven-yard reception, and the Falcons stunning the Patriots and their capacity crowd. One of the things they do well is they can strike fast. They have big playability, and then when they have that turnover, all of a sudden, they're in the position to do that. This is Lawyer Malloy working on O.J. Santiago, and Santiago's a big man. And then the other thing you're going to see on this, you can see he uses his body, just basketballs it, gets between the defender and the quarterback. But if you notice, no pressure at all. Martin Anderson, who has missed only one extra point, connects again. And here is Chandler's pass to Santiago. And the Atlanta Falcons taking advantage of the fumble recovery have opened up a 14-0 lead over the pass. Falcons off to an impressive start, leading the Patriots 14-0. Still plenty of time to go in the first quarter. And that was the 14th fumble recovery for the Falcons who lead in that department in the NFL. And for the third time in the game, Morton Anderson is kicking off. And this time it's deeper into the end zone where it's down for the touchback. You get a lot of you get a lot of chances in this league to make big plays. And when you have, you have to take advantage of it. This time, because of the coverage, they're able to force the fumble, and Burroughs picks it up. And then here's the touchdown. And watch. O.J. Santiago, he's right up here working on Lawyer Malloy. Here's the matchup. A nice job of Malloy of being physical and then recovery by Santiago in the ability to get his body between. And then Chandler just with no pressure is able to step in there and throw a rope. Patriots have not been able to protect Bledsoe well at all against an inspired defense of the Falcon. First and 10 of the 20-yard line, Robert Edwards diving forward in a good... Gain of five yards. 
New England hasn't been able to do much in the first two possessions. Two sacks, one fumble, and a punt. Dick, one thing to remember when you're going against Ernie Zampezi's offense, it's, it's one of timing. And if you can break that timing, you have yourself a better chance. Now, Bledsoe has a couple things going against him. He doesn't have his regular receivers. And so that timing automatically takes a hit. And then when you have guys jump in their coverage, it makes it even doubly tough. Two tight ends, Lovett Purnell, number 85, in there with Coates. And now sending the fullback. First four down is Bledsoe, and on the up, a fat flag was thrown. And the pass was intended for the rookie fullback, Chris Floyd. Looks like, uh, looks like Shane Jornet jumped inside. So five-yard penalty against the Falcons, and that should be a first down for the Patriots. AFC East standings, four teams at five and three. And the Patriots' schedule gets a lot tougher, although this is not an easy game by any means. And they're hoping to get some of their injured players back. Dick, what makes it even worse is you're at the nine-minute mark in the first quarter, and you already spotted them 14 points. At one, if, if they jump out too fast, now the good news is it's early in the game. You can still kind of recover and get back into doing what you want to do. But if they jump out too fast, you're forced to have to throw to get back in it. And they do not have Terry Glenn, Troy Brown, or Vincent Frisbee. From the 30-yard line, and here's Robert Edwards trying to go outside. And Ray Buchanan missed. And uh, a pretty nifty nine-yard gain by... Edwards, who's the leading rookie rusher in the National Football League this year, taking the place of Curtis Martin now with the Jets and kind of limping going back to the huddle. It wasn't limping going into that hole because it was his vision. We saw William White, the strong safety, come clean, and then he bounced it outside. I think this kid is just going to continue to get better. He's big. He's not a real fast guy, but he always is moving forward constantly, and that's, that's a very, very positive sign. Rookie from Georgia, now a second down and two. And Chris Floyd, the other rookie in the backfield, he's from Michigan. Very close to the first down, up to the 40-yard line. Dick, in this league right now, there aren't any dominant offensive lines. None. The best offensive lines are the lines that play well together. Like Minnesota does. Minnesota's done that. done that. The Denver Broncos have done that. But there isn't a line out there that just blows people off the ball. The Patriots are in that same boat. So what they have to be able to do is just be very assignment-oriented and stay on people. Third down and inches, and the quarterback sweep by Drew Bledsoe, sufficient for the first down. And the New England Patriots bring it out to the 42-yard line. And as Matt mentioned, uh, still plenty of time to get back in the game. Oh, yeah. This is a, a, a drive that you would hope the Pats, if you're on their side, would get something out of. Well, what they have, you can, they're calm. That's the one thing I'm seeing right now. They're not, they're not panicky. It's a long game. You got a lot to go. You got seven minutes in the first quarter, so you you can implement your full plan. First down for the Patriots, and the quick drop and the pass off the hands of. Robert Edwards bringing up second and ten. Last week, Ben Coates seemingly came to life. And your Indianapolis Colts, you're saying, look, everybody's beat up. Coates is going to have to be the guy who's going to have to carry him. And he did. Ten catches, had 100-some yards. Now, the Atlanta Falcons aren't going to let that happen. They're going to jump that coverage. They're going to force him to be physical. And they're going to force him to beat double teams at times. And this man right here, Eugene Robinson, plays with his brain as well as anyone in the league. Here is Edwards again, and speaking of Eugene Robinson, he, Robinson, he forced the play nicely from the secondary, and a gain of only one this time for Edwards. I love players who, if you graph them, their skill level, their skill level starts, here he is right here. His skill level is starting to go like this, and his brain power is going up like this. He's seeing the whole field. And he knows where everything is in front of him. And he lets it develop and comes up and makes plays. Doesn't run like he did, but he thinks maybe he's got a computer up there. He's got a computer chip in that noodle. Henry Ellard is in as a third wide receiver on third down and eight. 
And Bledsoe has to swing it out to Derek Cullors, and he is stopped short of the first down at the Patriot 48-yard line. Good defense by the Falcons with Michael Booker and rookie Keith Brooking making the tackle, and it's fourth down. Nice call by you on, on Michael Booker because not only did he make the tackle, he came off his coverage on Simmons down the field. If you notice, Bledsoe was looking to his right the whole time. He was looking for Simmons. Booker was all over it, forced to throw underneath, and then he made the tackle. So Tom Tupa will be punting for the second time in this first quarter. Todd Kinchin back deep. Sort of hangs up there, and a fair catch called for by Kinchin at the 21-yard line. It's been all Atlanta with 5.33 remaining in the first quarter. Falcons up 14 to nothing. Falcons leading the Patriots 14 to nothing. Falcons and 49ers tied for first in the NFC West at 6 and 2. They're playing next week at the Georgia Dome. And the Patriots locked in a four-way tie for the lead in the AFC East. Falcons will start from their 21. Long count by Chris Chandler, and it's Jamal Anderson looking for running room. It's not there, up the middle, and Todd Collins and the <laughs> aliens that uh, we see. Came from somewhere out there. <laughs> Second and eight. There you see the three receivers to the left. And one comes in motion. And here is Anderson again, and Jamal Anderson Gets close to the 30-yard line. Will be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Steve Israel and Ted Johnson there. Nick, one of the things that uh, Terry Bradshaw was talking about in our pregame show, which was a great observation, because the Patriots don't have a lot of people, they're giving you a lot of different looks. They're doing stunts and trying to create mismatches. And so what the Colts did last week and Atlanta's doing now is going with long counts and letting the, the defensive people kind of disperse to where they're going to be so you can see where they're at. Third down and two, Henry Thomas bothered with the ankle injury in there now for the Patriots. In motion is Tony Martin. And a play fake. Chandler's pass intercepted. Ty Law. And Ty Law finally is brought down inside the 30-yard line. A big turnover for New England. Nice job by Ty Law. And uh, not a good job by Chris Chandler. He, he forced that one in. Ty Law, one of the one of the really good cover corners in this league, and is and getting better. No place to go. He, he knew he kind of didn't want to do it. He threw it in a position. Actually, the ball had a chance to be caught, but was tipped, and Law came off on the other side. But he tried to force that ball in. Just watch a nice job by Collins. It's a little bit too much on Mathis. Ty Law's sixth interception, and right now he has the lead in the NFL. On first down, the pass to Robert Edwards. It was a low throw, but he held on to it, and he picks up a couple of yards on the play. So Ty Law now with six interceptions, taking over the NFL lead. He's played, re he's played really well, and he's been drawing usually the best, toughest receiver out there. And, and I also believe that he's going to get better because he's a guy who's seeking perfection. Patriots with an opportunity to get back in the game. Second down and eight on the Falcon 25. Look, stay on the ground to Robert Edwards. And a couple of yards will bring up third and about five for New England with uh, about three minutes remaining in this first quarter. Henry Ellen will check into the game along with Derek Colors now. Henry Ellard, as, as fans may know, was just coaching high school football two weeks ago. But he's known this system inside and out. He's been in it his whole career. And they brought him in off the street, and he seemingly didn't miss a beat. And right now, the Falcon defenders are covering these receivers extremely well. Henry Ellard's open right now in the slot. There's nobody on him. Third down and six. And the pressure. And Bledsoe gets rid of it incomplete, and a good thing he did. Derek Cullors, the intended receiver, and Eugene Robinson came up untouched from the secondary. Very uncharacteristic of Atlanta. 
this, generally they here's Eugene Robinson generally they're going to stay just in their zones but Rich Brooks their defensive coordinator is rolling the dice he's looking for somebody I told you Ellard was uncovered he was basically covered by the the safety who was about 15 yards deep but you're forcing him to have to find it with pressure in your face this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Adam Vinatieri and the kick is good so the Patriots taking advantage of Ty Law's interception and that's three very important points with 229 remaining in the first it's now a 14 to 3 lead Atlanta Chris Chandler getting ready to go back to work after Adam Vinatieri's 40 yard field goal gives New England their first points of the game and it was Ty Law's sixth interception of the season that set it up Vinatieri will be kicking off and Elijah Williams a rookie from Florida and the veteran Harold Green back and it's going to be Williams doesn't have much control when he grabs it trapped it but held on and runs it out to the 26 yard line 220 remaining in the first quarter we'll be right back to Foxborough easily the surprise of the NFC the Atlanta Falcons who started one in seven last year and finished six and two have gotten off to a six and two start tied with the 49ers who they've lost to already but will have the rematch next Sunday at the Georgia Dome and uh, that game expected to be a sellout after a very disappointing crowd last week against the Rams less than half full for that win first down for the Falcons on the 26 it's been a running attack thus far for Atlanta and they keep it that way Jamal Anderson tripped as he got the handoff and brings it out to the 30 yard line I want you to watch the third down they come with a blitz but I want you to see here's Henry Ellard in the slot they're going to come back in motion over here and a nice job underneath right there of taking away immediately your only underneath receiver everybody else is downfield Bledsoe has no place to throw the football no options you have to take the hit second down and six again two tight ends line up for Atlanta And Chandler falls down, but he manages to hand off to Anderson. And Jamal Anderson finally stopped. What a tremendous run after four Patriots try to bring him down, reminiscent of someone who used to wear number 32 years ago. Yeah, he has that Jim Brown look, a guy who he says idolized. Looked like Robbie Tobek stepped on his foot, but he does a nice job of getting the ball to Jamal Anderson. And then Anderson just from the waist down he's 235 but from the waist down he's about 280 he's thick legged look at this I mean he's he looks there's a guard in the backfield right here gotta pull up those socks first 20 yard gain for Jamal Anderson first down at midfield on the stutter count and on a rollout Chandler finds a receiver wide open OJ Santiago and Santiago the tight end Picks up 24 more yards before Todd Collins brings him down, and the Falcons are at the 26 of New England. Nice job of setting this up of play calling of Dan Reeves. You're running to that right side the whole time. Now you get your defense flowing, and that's tough coverage for your linebacker. To Santiago fakes down inside and comes across, you have to honor the run so you flow hard, and then the ball comes out. Final seconds of the first quarter, Santiago, who caught a touchdown pass earlier, that's a big kid, that Santiago. Look at the passing yards with Bledsoe and Chandler in the duel. And here is Anderson checking the line. And that will be the last play of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter with a score. The Falcons 14 and the Patriots 3. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Start of the second quarter here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Dick Stockton along with Matt Millen. The Falcons leading 14 to 3. And they have the ball on the Patriot 23, second down and seven. Chandler has completed four of five thus far. One touchdown and one interception. Hand off to Jamal Anderson. Anderson, who gained 43 yards and scored a touchdown stopped for a couple of yards and right now let's check in with Joe Buck for an NFL update Joe 
All right, Dick, New Orleans and Minnesota. Randall Cunningham out early with a twisted right ankle. Brad Johnson back in. They don't miss a beat. He says, remember me, 14-yard touchdown throw to Chris Carter. Carter now the all-time touchdown leader in Viking history. They're in the second quarter. Vikings up by seven. Back to New England, Dick and Matt. All right, Joe, thank you very much. And it's nice when you have two quarterbacks like that. Didn't take him long to find Chris Carter, did it? No. Third down and three. Jamal Anderson fights his way for the first down. And now uh, you get an idea of why the Atlanta Falcons have started out 6-2 and two with the great running of Anderson, who last week had a career-high 172 yards and three touchdowns against the Rams. What I, I like about Jamal Anderson is he'll give you the tough yard. And, if, I mean, obviously if there's a hole, he's going to run through it. But if there's not a hole, this is what he does very well. Sometimes there's not a lot to run through. He will push a crease as good as anyone in this league. So with him as an offensive line, you just have to get on people, and he'll create something. This time Anderson goes in motion to the left. And a whistle and a penalty flag. Phil Luckett in the white hat is our referee. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense, number 90, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Chad Eaton, who only played a few plays last week against the Colts. I told you a lot about Jamal Ash. There's a lot of things to like about him. The first thing, his power, his attitude is what I really like. He thinks he's great and he wants to be better. He comes from a good family. His dad is a is a bodyguard and he's been around a lot of people and he also he wears that 32 extremely well he wears that 32 with pride because that's first of all it's a good football number but jim brown is the reason he wears it plays a lot like it first and five and here is number 32 oh, for the falcons beautiful. and he goes in for the touchdown <laughs> let me tell you something the guy he just the guy he just gave a stiff arm to is no stiff that is Ted Johnson, as good a tackler as there is in this league. And I want you to watch right there, right to the face, ran right through it. And look at the striking similarities between Jamal Anderson and Jim Brown. The never stopping, churning legs, always moving, power, style, he's got it all. Defenders just slide off of Jamal Anderson the way they did with Jim Brown. He's a thicker guy than, than Jim Brown. And a little little shorter than Jim Brown, but they have that same powerful way. Morton Anderson is perfect on the extra point. And the Falcons now have opened up a 21-3 lead. And let's look at the number 32 today and the number 32 of yesteryear. He wears it because of Jim Brown. Jim Brown's got to be proud of him. Falcons leading 21 to 3 now Jamal Anderson with his second touchdown of the game now leads the NFC with nine touchdowns eight of them rushing and there is the seven play 74 yard drive and so the quiet Foxborough crowd now uh, seeing if the Patriots can come back and keep it a game as uh, Morton Anderson picks off line drive kick Derek Cullors on the return. Colors leaps over a couple of defenders and a pretty nice return out to the 33. This is a nice blend of speed and power and, and then awareness because watch the stiff arm right there to Ted Johnson. To the face and then the legs keep on moving. And Ted Johnson is, like I mentioned earlier, one of the best linebackers in this league. But he's also disgusted because he knows he came clean and he had a chance to make a play, and Anderson won. And interesting, this week on uh, on the TV, HBO did a little thing with Jamal Anderson, and they he was saying, bring on Ted Johnson. And Ted Johnson was excited about it, but he won round one. Drew Bledsoe can't find a receiver on first down, and finally is uh, hit by Cornelius Bennett and picks up three yards in the process. And, of course, uh, you... Put on the bulletin board any time you have a chance to get yourself inspired for the game and that's what the patriots felt with ted johnson with some of the comments innocently made as we found out by jamal anderson yeah but more than that i mean you watch the tape and and you see who the players are and 
Jamal Anderson knows who Ted Johnson is because he studies tape and knows he's a fine player and vice versa. Only 17 total yards for the Patriots and they're not helping their cause at all here. Robert Edwards is knocked back and uh, they have not blown the whistle. That, not once, they blew it about 10 times. Yeah, so not much a loss on the play. They're crushing them. They're, they're abusing them at the line of scrimmage and this is catching me a little bit off guard. I didn't expect the Atlanta Falcons to be able to do that. Listen to the whistle here. It came right at the end. His forward progress had been stopped. They let it go, and then they whistled it down. Third down. Loss of three yards will bring up third down and ten. Three wide receivers for the Patriots, Drew Bledsoe out of the shotgun, getting pressure again, and this time throws it away, but a flag comes down from upfield. Shane Dronet putting big-time pressure once again on Bledsoe, but there's a penalty from the secondary. Falcon defenders are covering the heck out of those Patriots. This one will go against the Falcons, and oh. they're going to call an intentional grounding against the Patriots. Defense number 34, intentional grounding, offense number 11, fouls offset, third down. Yeah. The play it again. Going to call intentional grounding. There was nobody there. He was not outside that area. And so they'll throw the flag. You have to be, if there was a tight end on either side, that goes straight back. And that's the area he would have to be outside of. And then he would have to be able to throw at or beyond the line of scrimmage. There's nothing there, so they made the throw. And then down the bottom of your screen, Ray Buchanan, I, I didn't see that one. Ray Buchanan playing extremely well. The word offset really fits well here. Yeah, forget the penalties. Third down and 10. Again, pressure on Bledsoe, and down he goes. Hey, the Falcons Travis are an aroused bunch, and Travis Hall returning after missing several weeks with a knee injury, and the Falcons have gotten the Bledsoe three times today. Not really thrilled. Rich Brooks, a defensive coordinator, is taking some chances, and the reason, there's Rich Brooks, the reason is his corners are eating the Patriot receivers alive. I mean, they are completely covering them all over the field. Tom Tupa will punt and Todd Kitchen back deep for the Falcon. Line drive kick, but a deep one. Kitchen at the 22. Lost his footing, and down he goes. By the way, this is the last game the Falcons will play outdoors the rest of the year. Every other game from now on will be played in the Dome. We'll be right back. Frustrating afternoon thus far for Drew Bledsoe as his uh, team trailing 21 to 3. There is uh, Terry Glenn nice. talking with Sean Jefferson. Glenn, of course, out of action along with Troy Brown and Vincent Prisby. Put an 88 on him. Yeah. That's the closest he's been to his jersey for a while. You can't dog Drew Bledsoe in today's game right now you, because he really doesn't have very many places to throw that football. The coverage by the Falcons has been unbelievably good. Falcons from the 29, Jamal Anderson finds a slither of an opening and picks up about uh, three on the play. If you're wondering why that sack came, I call it a coverage sack. Look, look what Bledsoe is looking at. He wanted to get to Jefferson. It was nothing there. The underneath coverage, and then if you went to the other side, to Simmons, again, nothing there. So when you're looking and waiting for a guy to come open, you can see, look to the right first for Jefferson. They undercut him, somebody over the top, Travis Hall. He puts the clamps on you. This is an underrated Falcon secondary, and they're playing without Ronnie Bradford, one of their regulars. Second and seven. The stutter count again. Chandler with the short drop. It's tipped up in the air. And uh, Chris Sullivan tipped it in the air, I believe. Spires was Frank dropping Spires. out. Yeah, he was Spires was dropping out on a zone blitz. Again, when you don't have the people, your regulars, your Willie McGinnis, your, your Henry Thomas, you don't have them all the time, you have to create something. Spires over here does a nice job of getting in the throwing right. lane, getting his hands up with that zone blitz, 
and knocking it down. He's a rookie from Florida State. Not a big guy, has better movement than he does size. Third down and seven. Willie McGinnis can only watch today. Good protection for Chris Chandler, and the pass broken up, intended for Terrence Mathis. And it was Steve Israel making the play. So the crowd urging on the Patriot defense, which holds, and the Falcons will have to kick. Well, and Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator for the Patriots, rolls the dice that time. He comes with a blitz inside and jumps his coverage. And had that ball even been caught, it would have been, it would have been short of the first down. They broke off the patterns because of the blitz. And it was an incompletion. Dan Straczynski will be putting, and Chris Candy goes back for the Patriots. Straczynski's first punt of the game is fielded by Candy, and he uh, steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Nearly five minutes gone by here in the second quarter. It's the Falcons leading 21-3. to At this point, the Falcon defense totally outplaying the Patriots' offense. The only points came after an interception by Ty Law and a field goal. Otherwise, it has been Atlanta and the coming in two of the top scoring teams in the NFL. Falcons fifth in scoring and the Patriots seventh. First down for New England at their 31. Drew Bledsoe with the pass to Ben Coates and the tight end brought down by three Falcons after a game of five. That's smart. You catch him in his zone. Bledsoe just getting rid of the ball quick, letting it ball to, to Coates, picking up the first. And slow getting up. Slow is, getting uh, up. The Patriot tight end who had uh, struggled uh, this season until last week when he caught 10 passes against the Colts, including a touchdown grab. I think he may have, uh, ooh, what the heck was that? The Fox box exploded momentarily. <laughs> I think uh, well, with our crack technical crew, we're going to put it together. So they're going to make they're going to make Ben Coach leave for a play uh, because of what they the officials perceive as an injury. When that happens, you have an injured player. He has to leave for at least one play. So love it, Parnell number 85 replaces Coates. I think uh, Ben Coach's uh, voice may have gone up an octave or two, or even three, depending on the uh, injury. severity. Second down and five. Patriots have not even gained one yard per play. Bledsoe firing to Simmons, the rookie, and he's got it. Tony Simmons with a big catch, and they're going to mark it at the 21-yard line. And a big 43-yard play for Simmons, the rookie, who caught his first NFL pass a week ago. Well, what he does well is he fights. And then Booker makes the mistake. See, he looked back and he slowed down. Simmons didn't stop. And the thing about Simmons that's impressive is his power. He's a fast guy, but he's also a strong guy. When you're playing outside, I want you to watch, just fight. See, you have to fight off the line of scrimmage. Booker doesn't do a very good job of getting his hands on him. And then I want you to watch right, right at the end. He turned and looked back. That was the difference of the play. Ben Coates is back in, and the handoff to Robert Edwards, who has not managed to do much thus far. And he is uh, ganged up for what appears to be no game. But Dick, the, that, that play happens because Bledsoe stepped up, fought off some pressure inside and dumped it because it looked like he was going to get taken down for a sack. And then Simmons keeps on fighting. They come with a blitz. He's right there. So you never leave your feet. Henri Crockett made a major mistake. You never leave your feet. When he's in the air, you have no control. Second down and 10, and Bledsoe going to the running back, Robert Edwards, out of the backfield. Short of the first down by about two yards. Cornelius Bennett making the tackle, so the Falcons leading 21-3, to and the Patriots are threatening here with under eight minutes to go in the first half. But they're not threatening with consistency from their wide receivers. And so if you're not getting that kind of play, if you're being covered, then you have to go to the others. You have to go to your running backs underneath. You have to go to some bunch. You have to create picks. You have to create openings if your guys are being covered all over the field. Third down and two, and they go to the run, and it's not there. Oh, stone. The Falcons have stopped Robert Edwards, and it was Jesse Tuggle and Henri Crockett 
on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down and a decision here for Pete Carroll. Well, it looks like Lovett Purnell is coming in and they're going to they're going to get after it. It's about toughness and so much of this game is attitude. I'm looking at Ernie Zampezi. Puffing that's, away. That's not a smokestack. That was Ernie. <laughs> fourth and two. Hey, this is attitude. Two tight ends on the 13-yard line. Burnell goes in motion. Bledsoe's got some time. Loses the ball. It's a fumble. And the Falcons have it, and it's Chuck Smith. He's going to score. Oh, there's one. Jefferson has a chance. See if he stays he in. Will oh, score. He's down. Chuck Smith will score. There are no flags down. And on a fumble recovery, the Atlanta Falcons have gone 71 yards for a big touchdown. Dick, Travis Hall just made an excellent play besides the sack and the fumble travis hall turned and picked off jefferson who was the only legitimate threat to tackle him down the field watch travis hall number 98 he's right here jefferson is the only guy who can make a play he turns and gets the push and that's the end of the chance to save the tackle and you can add lester archambault into the mix because he Forced the fumble, right. so Archambault, and you mentioned Travis Hall, and of course the guy who did a lot of the work, the 71-yard run by Chuck Smith. So a defensive touchdown by the Falcons. They lead 27-3. How much worse could it get for Drew Bledsoe? Morton Anderson's kick is good, and this crowd is again stunned, and we've been saying that all day. Well, look at Bledsoe. He has nowhere to throw the ball. His receivers have not gotten open. And it's history. It's going to get worse if they don't if they don't get open. There is a Chuck Smith getting much needed oxygen. That is his second NFL touchdown. But for the Falcons, their fourth defensive touchdown of the season. And there you see what their defense has gotten them today. Two turnovers into 14 points. Lester Archambault did a nice power move. And again. He should turn around and kiss his secondary because they're giving Bledsoe nowhere to throw. So to speak. Kick off by Anderson. And, and, uh, if he touched that, it's going to go out right there. That's a mistake by Cullen. Inside the five-yard line, it was Chris Candy, I think, who might have gotten his hand on it. Ruffin, Ruffin Hamilton is letting them know about it, too. See, if he touched that ball and goes out of bounds, it stays right there. And that's exactly what happened, Matt. So uh, the roof is caving in on the New England Patriots. See if he touches it. Well, I don't know unless that official it. had a unless it bounced off him or something. I can't tell Because see it doesn't look like he touches it at all and if it goes out of bounds a flag should be thrown and It would come out to the 40. You know well, let's see it's still bouncing Well, he didn't touch no, it. No, he there. never touched it there. Well, unless it brushed against him, but I don't see how it hit candy Ruffin Hamilton was letting them know how stupid it was but I mean from that vantage point It doesn't look like it was touched at all Patriots will start from the three-yard line. And what appeared to be a call that went against them that shouldn't have. Here is Bledsoe going deep to Sean Jefferson. And covered downfield by Ray Buchanan. The crowd looking for an interference call, none coming. Well, you saw Pete Carroll arguing that call there. But this is what he was watching and seeing how it happens. He sees it, tries to give a little body English. And then there's the strip. The ball's in the ground. He's disgusted. Now watch. Now he gets a little bit of hope. Because that's where he thinks, oh, maybe we're going to tackle him. And then Travis Hall bumps Jefferson off. And he goes, oh, no. This is how much worse can it get? Well, his answer was on the ensuing kickoff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Second and 10, Cedric Shaw, the running back number 23, from his end zone. Bledsoe's pass is incomplete. Intended for Jefferson and uh, William White, the strong safety, defending on the play. So Jeff Jefferson had some alligator arms right there. He knew William White was coming in the middle. Again, we want to remind you uh, that the Patriots shorthanded with uh, Terry Glenn, Troy Brown, and Vincent Brisby out with an injury. Uh, Glenn could be coming back next week as well as Vincent Brisby. But uh, you're looking at the three wide receivers who have a total of five touchdown catches between them. That's a pretty big load not to have. 
Third down and ten out of the shotgun. And Bledsoe completes to Simmons. First down to the 17-yard line. Buchanan covering, but the rookie from Wisconsin grabs it and a pickup of 14. They need something. That's the first time other than that broken play with Simmons before. Now see, Simmons is young, and he's running. That What you saw right there was basically a college route. He wasn't selling anything, but he did do a good job of pushing him up the field and coming back to the ball. He has great hands and... Uh, Strong hand. Pete Carroll said kid. that he's as, as accurate hand placement for a ball that he's ever seen. Wants to play because of the injury. Flags are down on first down. Cedric Shaw. And we have movement all over the line. Well, the guy who made the tackle, I believe, is the guy who jumped inside. That's William White. They came with a safety blitz inside. You have to have patience. Oh, hey, you're going to go the other way. That surprises me. A little bit of motion because William White jumped that thing inside. Tires are falling off for the Patriots here in this first half. Illegal motion, offense number 85 in motion toward the ball. Penalty is declined. And it was Lovett Second Purnell down. the tight end. Well, next week it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First to battle between the top two teams in the NFC West. The 49ers who play Carolina today against the Falcons. And then Brett Favre and the Packers take on the New York Giants, plus other regional action. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Check your local listing. Second down and 10. Screen pass to Cedric Shaw out of the backfield. And he is uh, tackled at the 23-yard line. Five short of the first down. A gain of six. Well, that NFC uh, West matchup could find two seven and two teams. And as you pointed out earlier, the Falcons will gain great respect, and any of those teams will when they can knock off the 49ers and they'll have their chance next week. Yes, and they're, they're certainly a much better team than we've seen in previous years. And they're even better than they were the first time they played San Francisco. Third down and three. Bledsoe up the middle, has his tight end Ben Coates. Old reliable and a first down. The play was blown dead, although the Falcons I stripped not, it away. I have not heard whistles quick right away. These are these are some late whistles. They've been coming in slow. Coach made the tackle and went down, but you're trained in this league to play to the whistle is blown. Listen to this. I don't hear one. He came right there at the end. That's. And then Max Lane, and here it is on the other end. I just saw Max Lane got himself a hole in the... Play was blown dead, not a fumble. Ground can't call. First down at the 30-yard line. Pressure on Bledsoe. Robert Edwards out of the backfield will pick up another first down for the Patriots. Out to their 41-yard line. Jesse Tuggle in on the play. And a gain of 12. Yeah, I thought that's Max Lane's keister. Sticking out of that hole. That is your basic down, hole Patriot. in the drawers. <laughs> and sometimes... He's a little repair work. I think he does. You just get to the sideline and he starts stitching you up. Good thing is he has got some under drawers or we wouldn't have shown that thing. Would have been censored by the board. First down at the 42-yard line Woo for the Patriots. Trailing 28 to 3, needs something before intermission. Bledsoe over the top, and again. Well, I think Jesse pressure. Tuggle got away with one right there, Dick. It, yes, it was within the five yards. The ball was not tipped. But you can't whack him when the ball's in the air intended for Simmons, the receiver crossing underneath. Watch Jesse Tuggle, number 58. He's going to go up and hit him. Yeah, that's clearly that should have been a flag. Well, that's two calls that uh, went against the red and blue. Jesse's trying to give it as quick <laughs> as he can. That's that's Hope, <laughs> hoping that's, for the best. Yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> Make the call for him. Maybe they'll bite on it. Second down and ten. Under three minutes to go. And the uh, clock ran down. There was no whistle, and the pitch goes to Robert Edwards. I don't get this. This is the slowest whistles I've heard. Well, I saw the clock or not heard. go down to zero and uh, no whistle well before the snap. A loss of one on that play. 
Yeah, see this thing, this is supposed to be, that's supposed to be blown for a, lot, for a lot of different reasons. You're trained in this league as a player to go until the whistle blows. And then when you don't, and the, you assume a guy's down, and somebody plays to the whistle, then flags start to be thrown, and that's wrong. Third down and 11 for the Patriots, who trail 28 to 3. Bledsoe getting another rush. This time from Shane Dronan and double coverage for Henry Eller downfield. And it is knocked away by Eugene Robinson. So trying to go deep to Henry Ellard and the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a hold against the Patriots and they'll decline it and yes. turn it up to fourth down. Ray Buchanan is not getting up. He had the coverage on Henry Ellard down the field. And then a nice job of the safety to get over in time. And Eugene Buchanan Robinson, lipping off, yeah. Yeah, to knock that ball away. Going for Ellard as Bruce Armstrong, the left tackle, goes back to the bench. Now, this is called playing center field. He's trying to throw to the man coverage outside to Ray Buchanan. And then a good job of Eugene Robinson getting over there. Buchanan staying with it. Get a little, got away with a little push there at the end. And it's fourth down, and Tom Tupa will kick it away with 2.05 remaining in the first half. Todd Kinchin. This is a terrific punt, and it's going to drop and take a Patriot bounce where it's down at the seven-yard line. And a two-minute warning here at Foxborough with 1.53 showing on the clock. But all Falcons to the tune of 28-3. to three. Defensive effort by the Falcons major today with four sacks and two turnovers into scores. And what doesn't come up in all those statistics is the, the, the job the defensive backs are doing because there's really not been very many open receivers at all for Drew Bledsoe. First down from the eight-yard line for Chris Chandler and the Falcons. Going with two tight ends. Jamal Anderson brings it out to the 12-yard line, and a flag is down. Anderson with 64 yards coming into the series and two touchdowns. Timeout is taken by the Patriots, even though there is a flag. That is the Patriots' first timeout, looking to get the ball back. You know, Dick, you mentioned earlier when we, we gave that little graphic, you're still lucky for the referee. Face mask, five yards only, defense number 97. Will be added to the end of the run, remains first down. I mentioned the genetic poise, and I didn't really have a chance to expand on that. And his father's a, uh, a bodyguard for a lot of the champion boxers. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Leonard, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of celebrities. And he's been around that. And I think when you get exposed to a lot of people like that in situations like that, you have a sense of of what it really takes to be there. And he he has that sense. He carries himself that way. And I think that's a good thing because he's comfortable in a lot of situations. And the game is not too big for him. He, he learned and saw how classy they handle themselves around fans. First down and one following the penalty. The Patriots timeout did not go into the books because of the penalty. And this is a uh, running play to Jamal Anderson. And uh, let you know how many teams are uh, sorry about not drafting Jamal Anderson. He was the 24th running back picked in the 1994 draft. Here are the other running backs who were taken before. You can give an argument he's better than every one of those players. I mean, certainly it's taken some time to get to this point. He showed up with Ironhead Hayward. He's talking to Ted Johnson there, maybe saying, sorry about that straight arm I gave you on the goal line. But what he has is special. And he's had a chance to develop it. Now, he's playing a lot more with Hans Bart out with the injury. Um, that gives him a few more carries that he wouldn't have had. And I think they like what they see in him handling the ball all the time. Because the other facet of his game that we haven't talked about is he's an excellent pass receiver. And he likes uh, catching the ball in the open field and making something out of that. You saw just right behind Barry Sanders. And, of course, Terrell Davis leading the NFL. Anderson third in the league. First down for the Falcons on the 18.
Gets another carry, does Jamal Anderson, and crosses the 21-yard line as we wind down to a minute remaining in the first half. And now the Patriots will call the timeout, and this is their first timeout of this opening half. Very impressive Atlanta showing thus far. The Falcons coming in 2-2 two and two on the road. Having lost to the 49ers and the New York Jets. And again, Atlanta very proud of the fact that they have one of the best records in the NFL right now at 6-2. and two, With only the Broncos and the Minnesota Vikings ahead of them. There's a lot of players in this team. That guy right there, that Billy Idol looking guy, that Travis Hall. He is, uh, there are a lot of people don't know how good he is. This is him working out before the game. He's, he's got a bad knee, and what he is is a hard worker, but he's got a Howie Long first step. And every now and then, you know, he misses home. He just gets on the old, <laughs> old phone and, hey, Mom, how are you? I'm playing today, Mom. You won't believe this. Won't They're going to let me play. Won't start, but I'll be in there. Play fake on second and seven, and here is the tight end, Brian Kozlowski, and he's got the first down for the Falcons. Short of the 30-yard line, so the uh, plans of the Patriots to uh, use timeouts, get the ball back, and perhaps get a score before half uh, diminishing in a hurry. And now Atlanta seeing a chance to possibly getting some points before intermission calls its first time. Well, they thought about it first. They wasted about 9 or 10 seconds. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize how good this Atlanta Fal Falcon team is. They're not a great team. I think Dan Reeves is still finding out himself just where they're at but some players have stepped up one of them Bob Christian their fullback Jamal Anderson you know they have the offensive line right now is very assignment oriented but that's all they have to be and then those wide receivers can make you know some plays down the field and so this is an offense when Chandler's in there that has the ability to take steps up that ladder we spoke about no question about it and uh, they saw what happens when they don't have Chris Chandler in there with Steve DeBerg 44 year old backup had to take over against the Jets and that was uh, uh, ugly a nightmare looking at. yes yeah. a nightmare for the Falcons first and ten at the 29 yard line 44 seconds to go in the hand Chandler's gonna put it up and the pass caught by Terrence Mathis Stops the clock and a first down. We've talked about the big game next week for the Falcons against the 49ers. And this is the rest of their schedule. Keep in mind that after this game, all of their remaining games will be played indoors on artificial turf in domes. And uh, that's a winnable schedule for a team that's been pretty solid thus far. But nobody is going to look at this Falcon team like they've arrived until they beat the 49ers. And they still have another half of football. They have to put two halves together. Still, the New England Patriots are capable of coming back in the second half and getting some points, especially if his receivers can get open because Bledsoe has nobody to throw to here in the first half. That's apparent, Matt, that uh, having those three big wideouts out has affected that offense as uh, Tony Martin, the intended receiver on that pass, stopping the clock 34 seconds to go. Those are Bledsoe's numbers. He's been sacked four times and coughed it up on two occasions. And one, Chuck Smith ran in 71 yards for a touchdown. If you don't have guys who are getting open, then you have to create some things. So then you go to picks, or you go to little group bunch packages in four this, And he goes out of bounds to stop the clock. And he'll spot it at the 37-yard line. A lot of time to throw that ball. And Mathis does a good job of finding that spot in the zone. But they go here with a four-man rush. All kinds of time to throw. And Mathis just finds himself behind the corner who's rolled up and in front of the safety and then has the wherewithal and time to be able to run out of bounds. 22-yard pickup for Terrence Mathis, who began his career with the New York Jets. And with 28 seconds left now, this is the drive for the Falcons. They're on the pass, 37. Picking up the blitz and the pass and nearly intercepted. And it was the rookie Greg Spires who deflected an earlier pass. That was intended for Jamal Anderson. Remember I mentioned to you earlier, not a real big guy. He's uh, on the short side, doesn't have a lot of weight to him but he runs very well. I mean, that's Jamal Anderson 
He's taken out of the backfield, dropping off that defensive line spot. He has good movement, and you can use that in a scheme. But what you'd like to have is a guy with size and speed outside to put pressure on. They don't have that right now. Second and ten. And uh, Chandler's pass, and it should have been intercepted right there. It was right into the hands of Willie Clay, the free safety. So the Patriots are just uh, a beat behind just about every aspect of the game thus far. And they were on that play. I think uh, I think Chris Chandler thought he had Chad Eaton on the hard count going with that long hard count which he saw on tape last week that the Colts used tenth play of the drive coming up those are Chris Chandler's statistics third and ten on the New England 37 inside handoff to Jamal Anderson got hit once and he gets it down to the 30 yard line and Morton Anderson might be getting the call now. Ten seconds to go. And Anderson, who, oh, he's kicked in domes. He has kicked 18 in a row outdoors and nine consecutive field goals outdoors. So you're putting the Stockton Maloiki on him? Well, I don't think he can hear me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You, you said, you've sat at home before in games, and the guy says, this guy hasn't missed a foul shot, and boink, right. banks went off. Well, now I'm a little nervous. This will be a 47-yard attempt. Putting you to the test, Stockton. See if you, see if you put the hex on. You no, know, Matt, it is a 47-yard attempt. Okay, <laughs> don't backtrack on me now. Martin Anderson to attempt the field goal, and the holder is Dan Straczynski, the putter. Six seconds remaining in the first half. And Morton Anderson has a field goal attempt block for the second time this year. I do not take responsibility for <laughs> you that. You should. Though. You should. People at home go, way to go, Stockton. You put the hex on him. Eric Collins got in there and blocked the kick. What happens when you're trying from a distance, the trajectory of the ball is lower. And it comes out this way instead of this way. And then a nice job of that hand getting up of Farrah Collins, but it's because the trajectory of the ball is a little bit lower. You have to get a little more distance. <laughs> Either that or he did a very nice job of aiming for Collins' hand and he hit it. So the block field goal attempt and the Patriots with one second remaining in the hand. Well, that's a small consolation for the New England Patriots the way this first half has gone. And here is uh, Drew Bledsoe with the Hail Mary. It's deflected and uh, came very nearly uh, deflected into the hands of a New England receiver. But that'll do it for the first half. The score, the Falcons 28, the Patriots 3, and the, pa the Patriots hear the fans booing. Joe Buck and Ron Pitts will have the Visa Halftime Report. After these messages and a word. Oh, we're getting set for the beginning of the second half. The Falcons lead 28-3. Jamal Anderson has two touchdowns, and uh, Chuck Smith ran 71 yards. But the real story of this game, I think, would have to be the defense. And you pointed out early where the key defensive plays have been made by Atlanta. Well, I think the biggest part has been in their secondary because Drew Bledsoe's really had no place to throw the football. When he has had time, he's looked downfield, and they've been covered. And so the secondary and the linebackers, the coverage unit of the Atlanta Falcons, I think has played an excellent first half. Now, what do the New England Patriots need to do? You talked about their receivers not getting open to come back uh, in the second half of this game. Well, I think when you can't just flat out beat guys, you, what you have to be able to do is you have to create some openings. And so what you do is you, you go to what's called a bunch package where you, you take two or three receivers, and usually it's three receivers, and you bunch them all together. And that forces your defense to have to wait for you to declare, and it gives you a little bit of room to work with. And the other thing you can do if you're getting a heavy dose of man-to-man -man, is you can go with some picks, which are supposed to be illegal in this in this league. But it's, but it's done. Well, times. of course. I mean, it's never illegal until it's called. You just keep on doing it until it gets called. So what you're saying is that the Patriots have to make adjustments and they have, to, have to, uh, to go into the bag of tricks a little bit, perhaps. The other thing is that as if the uh, Falcons go to more zone in the second half, being up by 25, then you'll be able to have some creases to work with. Elijah Williams 
returning to the 21 yard line as we get the second half underway let's take a look at the halftime statistics and uh, the Falcons with a tremendous edge in rushing passing and total yards in the game not to mention the other categories yeah it's just been dominant by by the Falcons in the first half and those mistakes of five drop balls four sacks two turnovers resulting in 14 points so this has been a one-sided game as both teams tied for first place in their respective divisions entering the game today two tight ends for the Falcons on first down from the 21 and here is Jamal Anderson Anderson gaining 79 yards on 16 carries in the first half stopped by Collins and Johnson the linebackers the other half of that quotient is defensively you have to take a couple chances you have to obviously play solid run defense and not let him get going uh, him being Jamal Anderson but then you have to take some shots defensively to create situations for turnovers maybe an errant throw or he tries to force the ball under pressure uh, this is a tough offensive team that the Falcons bring in second down and seven And the foundation is the running game. Jamal Anderson, and that time he is upended by Chris Sullivan. No gain on the play. Yeah, Sullivan was right there. And, and Wheeler was there as well. Again, remember when you're talking about this Atlanta offensive line, it's not a dominant line. And so what you have to do is get off the block. That time he just threw Bob Whitfield to the side and is able to make a play. They're not physically dominant. They don't get a lot of push. You can get off your blocks, and then you can you can create something inside. Fullback Bob Christian is lined up way to the right on third and seven. Nobody in the backfield. Chandler with no protection, trying to get away from Slade, the linebacker, and he is knocked out of bounds by Steve Israel. So the Patriots take advantage of the very fact you brought out that there was no one back there to help protect Chris Chandler. And a good job down the field of coverage. They just gave, they just gave the, the Falcons what they've been getting all half. Look at the coverage all around. No place to go. Jamal Anderson's looking underneath at the end, but it wouldn't have been enough for the first down. Everybody down the field had been covered. The one guy you saw come open to the other side was away from where he was. He couldn't square his shoulders to throw. Dan Straczynski will kick from the 13-yard line. A high kick. Chris Canty feels the punt and runs upfield. And Canty brings it out to the 43-yard line. So it'll be good field position for the Patriots' first offensive foray. And New England with a good defensive stop on the first play of the third quarter. Wide receiver Jamie German in on the punt coverage helped off the field limping on his own power rookie from Miami. Well, In this game you never know I mean there's an old rule Ted Hendricks the all pro used to tell me don't stand around a pile don't get caught in a pile easier said than done. Jamie German ends up just getting twisted up in the middle of the pile. Henry Ellard is in in the slot to the right first down at the 42 for the Patriots. Good protection this time Robert Edwards and Edwards appears to have a first down for the Patriots. Again still coverage down the field has been the story of this game and you look at what's been going on Ray Buchanan had been throwing a blanket over Jefferson. And then William White working on Coates. Buchanan again to the outside. And really, it's been a it's been a, a blanket all day long. There's not been really anything to throw down the field, which has forced Bledsoe to have to look elsewhere. And on the first play of the third quarter, his elsewhere is Robert Edwards in the checkdown. Now, as a defense, I'll live with that. I'm up by 25. I'll say, look, I'm going to take away your wide receivers. You beat me someplace else. Yeah, you'll even give up Coates uh, on the underneath pattern yeah. as well. As you see, the uh, pass distribution by the Patriots, and it has been the running backs leading the parade with six catches. First down out of the shotgun on the 48-yard line, and there's an open receiver, and it's Henry Ellard. And you mentioned how he played under 
Ernie Zampezi's system for the old Los Angeles Rams and knows it well in a gain of 18. Well, what he does here this smart is he uses some motion to create a little bit of separation. And then Henry Ellard is finding the zone. Now, he's not going to beat you. Oh, they're going with a hurry up. I like this. Down this is good. 28 to 3. And good, again, good protection, but it runs out. And the pass is uh, ruled. Well, it's, a, it's a catch by like Ben Coates yeah, for, for minus about four or so. Lester Archambault, who stripped uh, Bledsoe of the ball, leading to a defensive touchdown. Lester Archambault is playing pretty well. Yes, he is. And here, they're going with the hurry up again. This is good. Now, this prohibits the Falcons from giving you a lot of different personnel. Loss of five yards on that last play, and now a penalty is called. Phil Luckett, our referee. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 78, five yards. It remains second and That's got to really bother Pete Carroll, a five-yard penalty, false start against Bruce Armstrong. Yeah, that's up top. He's working against Chuck Smith, Smith and that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why he's trying to get out there quicker, because Chuck Smith will take that corner on you. Drew Bledsoe. Sacked four times. He's been hit many other times. Has fumbled twice. It's been a rough afternoon for Bledsoe. Second down, 21 for New England. And the pass intended for Simmons thrown behind him. Nowhere. Incomplete. And Coverage. that'll bring third and long. Coverage again. That time, that was Booker on Simmons. That was a three-receiver route. And watch Simmons working on Booker. Gets his hands on him. Gives him one, one place to throw. Or one place to run, rather. Remember, this is an offense that's based on timing, and if you disrupt the timing, you kill the route. Third and 21, and another whistle. This is not good. And they were sending everyone in there, Eugene Robinson from the secondary, and a timeout was called right before the snap by the Patriots. Early in the third, Falcons by a wide margin. As we said, the Falcons calling the timeout and Ernie Zampezi trying to cook up something for the Patriot offense on the Atlanta 41. Well, this, this game's always about uh, reactions and, and countering. And right now, Ernie Zampezi is going to have to counter what's going on in that secondary because his receivers are being covered. Third and 21. Let's go. And the pass just too long for Sean Jefferson, who had beaten the defenders, particularly Ray Buchanan, and that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, Ray Buchanan was looking for uh, Eugene Robinson in the middle, but he bit outside. See, his head was to the inside. You can't look at that. It's his zone, and he was expecting Eugene Robinson to be there, but had that ball been thrown a little bit inside or had Jefferson been able to break it off sooner, it had six. So that was an opportunity lost by the Patriots who got into Atlanta territory. Tom Tupa with the kick. Todd Kinchin with the fair catch. And the uh, Patriots unable to keep it in the field of play. So the touchback and we'll come back to New England with a little more than four minutes going by in the third. First down for the Falcons on the 20, leading 28 to three. Going with two tight ends most of the afternoon. Jamal Anderson gets a couple, and uh, he's got about 84 yards. It was uh, Lawyer Malloy and Greg Spires on the play. And there was a guy you just mentioned, Lawyer Malloy, whose game I really like. Now, he's not, he's not quite there yet, but he is inside that tackle box as good as there is in this league. I was just talking to him before the game. I said, hey, now, Jamal Anderson, he's pretty tough. He said, look, if he has a ball, he's getting hit. <laughs> He will hit anything. AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his two interceptions in the fourth quarter against the Colts. Second and eight. And again, they go to Anderson, and the Patriots stop him cold. Willie Clay forcing it from the secondary, making the stop at a minus one for Anderson. Now, that's one of the adjustments we talked about. You have to roll the bones a couple times. Willie Clay walks up from his secondary position, and they come with him off the corner. He's unaccounted for. 
You watch, he's gonna show up over here. Here he comes. There's no one there. He's not accounted for in the blocking scheme because he's outside that box and he makes the play. Third down and nine on the 21. Todd Kinchin. In at wide receiver, he's in the slot. Patriots on the blitz. Chandler, and it's caught by Terrence Mathis. A very difficult grab nice by catch. Mathis, and a first down and a 14-yard pickup to the 35. And an excellent job by Chris Chandler. I mean, you have to wear some big pants to make this throw because they're bringing numbers, and he's coming clean. He sits right in front of that, spires right on his face, and then watch, watch the adjustment. That is a great job of getting back to the ball by Mathis. And he'll let you know he has the first. Great concentration by number 81. Four catches for 56 yards. First down, Falcons on the 35. Chandler getting more time, and the pass is caught at midfield by Tony Martin. And Martin making the grab, good for 15 yards. And this is why Chris Chandler, when he gets in rhythm, awfully tough to beat. Well, and, and he's getting rhythm because not only will Jamal Anderson, 32, run, he'll also block if you ask him to. And Lauren Malloy goes in there and throws him, but it doesn't matter because the time was already given, and Martin's able to run that route to the inside on Ty Law. Tony Martin's first catch of the day. Another first down for the Falcons at midfield. They put Anderson in motion, and the pass is caught by Jamal, and he is written out of bounds, and he's only about the three yards shy. Well, uh, coming up, the X-Files tonight season premiere, Matt, uh, right here on Fox. A lot of strange things go on on that X-Files show. Excellent show. And you'll get home uh, in time to see it at 9, 8 Central. They're just blowing that thing all over the place, aren't they? That guy, you see that guy? That thing blew up right in front of his face. It was an explosion. Those eyes never blinked. True patriot, so to speak. Second down and two. On the 42 of the Patriots. Solid drive, at least until that play, but Jamal Anderson thrown back by Todd Collins for a three-yard loss. Only thing the Patriots haven't been able to do here at the eight minutes gone in this third quarter really is pressure, is pressure channel, because they've pretty much taken care of the run here in this quarter, and they've, and they've taken some shots and they've brought some blitzes, but they haven't been able to get any kind of pressure without bringing numbers. Third down and five for the Patriots, for the Falcons, who have controlled the ball well in their first possession. Of second half, and open. here is a Chandler, and intended for Martin, covered by Law, and the flag comes down from way back on the 15-yard line, and let's see if Ty Law is called for pass interference, and that'll be it. It'll be a first down for the Falcons as a result. Working outside, Ty Law draws the coverage, gets his hand, there's the ball. Right there. And that's what they're going to call. Terrence Mathis, meanwhile, was wide open in the middle of the field. But he made the throw, and Ty Law was hoping that they weren't going to call that. Coming into this game, the Falcons leading the NFL in time of possession over 32 minutes and doing a good job of it here in their first possession of the third quarter. They've had the ball for quite a while. First down on the New England 31. Jamal Anderson moves the pile and does he ever for about five. That's what I was talking about, about how he pushes the crease. It doesn't have to be a big area. Watch, well, there's nothing really there, but there he finds just that little crease, and then you just run through things. It's Ted Johnson and Eaton Spires is there, but look at this down here. See the legs moving? He never, ever stops moving. He keeps his feet churning and those legs driving forward. Right. Go, go, go. Imagine he's got, he's like a guard in the backfield from the waist down. 
And a busy workhorse today with 22 carries for 85 yards. Second and five. There you go again to Jamal Anderson. And just chewing up the clock, it'll be third down and short coming up for Atlanta with under six minutes to go. And they've kept the Patriot defense on the field for a long I want you to, time. I want you to watch his legs. And some guys are about feet and vision. Jamal Anderson is about power and balance. He has nice feet, but watch how he never stops. He keeps on churning. Even into the hole as he's going, he's still churning as he's falling down. You're in high school, college, little league, and you're a running back. Watch Jamal Anderson. From the waist down, that's the way you do it. Third down and two on the 23-yard line. And they give this to Anderson, and not that time. He has stopped cold, and that'll bring up fourth down. Still two yards short of the first down, and Morton Anderson will be coming on to try a field goal. Anderson had one blocked from the 47 as time ran out in the first quarter. Which, incidentally, was your fault for those of you at home? No, I've, I've thought about it, and I will take responsibility. <laughs> okay. 40-yard attempt coming up now. He's due. <laughs> there you go. Anderson's field goal attempt, and it's good. A line drive that just went over the crossbar, and Morton Anderson has added to the Falcon lead. It's now Atlanta 31 to England 3. We'll be right back. Back at Foxborough Stadium, Dick Stockton and Matt Millen, where the Falcons have stretched their lead to 31 to 3 with 427 remaining in the third quarter. Morton Anderson who just connected on a 40-yard field goal. This is a short kick. Derek Cullors fields it on the 15. And uh, Cullors tries to twist away to no avail. Well, uh, been a lot of play about how the AFC has dominated the NFC in interconference play, leading 19 to 9. But the real difference is the AFC West has been all over the weak NFC East or the weaker NFC East, 11 to 1. Otherwise, Matt, they're even in all other competition. The NFC East is not having themselves a stellar year. And when you look up and down the rosters, they really don't have the players they had in years past. And they really don't have quarterbacks. And that's save Troy Aikman. That's pretty a pretty much depleted conference. First down at the 26. Bledsoe's pass caught by Robert Edwards for a minimal game. Well, in the AFC East, and of course, here in New England, the Patriots are their team. They know that Doug Flutie is going to be playing for the Buffalo Bills against the Jets later. Miami with a 20 to nothing lead over the Colts. We'll go back to those standings in a moment on the hurry up. Oh, the pass, good catch. And Sean Jefferson took a hit by Eugene Robinson, but held on. Still ticking. <laughs> it's, a, it's a time mix throw. <laughs> Takes that licking and keeps on ticking. They're going to go with the hurry up again. They're trying to just see what happens when you go with hurry up. It forces your defense to stay in only a few coverages. 15-yard game that time. And this one to Simmons, the rookie. And he did not have control. He bobbled the ball and did not have possession. Covered by Michael Booker and Devin Bush. Watch this uh, throw to Jefferson. And this is at regular speed. This is against what they call cover two. Nice hit by Eugene Robinson using the shoulder, driving through him. It has to be thrown on timing. Second and 10 with 340 to go in the third. Inside handoff. And not much there. Robert Edwards, no game. And that will bring up third down. The Falcons now have basically they've gone to their zone coverage and they're going to give up the underneath. Playing a lot of what what is called cover two, and you have two safeties deep. Third down and nine. Letso looking for an opening. Another hit and another catch, and this time it was Henry Ellard who gets a pat on the back from Eugene Robinson. It's all in the game. A gain of 17, matching his number, and a Patriot first down to the 40 of Atlanta. You can see Eugene Robinson right back there, number 41, and he's reading Drew Bledsoe. Knowing where he has to be in the field, Henry Ellard is reading 
Eugene Robinson. And they're going deep. No one there for the Patriots. No one home. Simmons to Simmons and made the wrong cut. Yeah, they're not on the same page. And that's good. That's to be expected. Only the third game that Simmons is playing. He's not going to be completely on the same page. And I would assume it was Simmons who made the wrong cut. I would think so. Again, there. Uh, of course, I've been wrong before. Getting the line. <laughs> not that I can personally remember. Second and ten. Bledsoe throws it away. Right now, let's check in with Joe Buck for an NFL update. Joe? All right, Dick, in Minnesota, it's a seven-point Viking lead until Robert Smith rolls 61 yards with a Chris Carter convoy. It's 24 to 10, Minnesota. So many weapons, so many big play guys. No wonder they're seven and one. Matt, I like the goatee. Somebody around here says it breaks up the monotony of your face. I, I don't get that. Dick and Matt, back to you. <laughs> what do you mean? What do they mean by that? I, uh, I think he's right because my kids tell me the same thing. <laughs> Nice job there by Chris Carter of staying with the block. There was a penalty. Yep. Yeah, there's a flag on the field. Ineligible downfield in the pass. Offense number 64. It's about the center. decline, making it third down. Yeah, they were trying to run a screen out to that right side. Simmons is already blocking downfield. There was no place really to throw, and so Bledsoe just got outside and dumped it. But in the interim, Woolabaugh, anticipating that there was going to be a throw, got down. Pass the line of scrimmage too far. Third and ten on the Falcon 40. Bledsoe stepping up and it's intercepted. Jesse Tuggle, no, Keith Brooking. The rookie from Georgia Tech with the interception and that was a ball thrown. No blue shirts around and Brooking, the rookie from Georgia Tech, snuffs out that threat. Well, the crowd's leaving in a hurry on that one. Stakes continue to roll on for the New England Patriots. That is the third turnover committed by New England. Bledsoe throwing it right into the hands of uh, Keith Brooking, the rookie linebacker. And it's just one of those days for the Patriots, but for the Atlanta Falcons, shaping up is the uh, what will be a huge road victory. First down at the 41 of Atlanta. Chris Chandler on the play fake. And Chandler's pass, and Ty Law oh, he's good. has picked it off again. That's he's his good. second interception. Ty Law is good. Intended for Tony Martin, and that's two today for 24. That's kind of surprised me. You're up by 28 points. You think you just kind of put this one in the bank and run it out, but he tries to use that against him by going with play action. But the guy who has not stopped fighting all day long is Ty Law. Had a great break on the ball, nice concentration and read this perfectly was manned up outside on Martin. You know, you've got a great point there. You've got a Jamal Anderson in your backfield who could uh, kill the clock on his own, and now you throw a pass, a 20-yard pass. Law with his seventh interception of the year. He's pretty good there. That Ty Law is a pretty good player. And the Patriots in Falcon territory. First down, Bledsoe going deep for Sean Jefferson, and Jefferson makes the catch and is tackled at about the two. It was Ray Buchanan who he beat that time. Got on top of him, a nice job of protecting for Bledsoe. He's able to see this outside, a double move. I don't know who's holding whom, but they're banging each other. The ball's in the air. Credit Jefferson for getting the separation. The ball's thrown, and really a good job of Buchanan holding on to that wrist. Watch how he holds on to the wrist to throw. Looked like he tried to knock the ball away at first. The 46-yard gain. And it's first and goal for the Patriots on the Falcon 2. Patriots with three tight ends in the formation. And Wide the play fake, Bledsoe's pass, touchdown to Ben Coates. It was wide open. Nice choice of play action. Coates, one of the toughest things in all of football. Last week, on our Fox field in the studio, they showed how John Mackey would make this work. Nice job of Bledsoe selling the fake and then coming out. And then Coach just slips by. You have got to honor the run fake. And Coach uses that against him, slips to the outside and it's six. Adam Vinatieri for the extra point. It's good. 
And it was Ty Law with his second interception of the game who set it up. And Ben Coates with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. And so the Falcons with a questionable call of uh, keeping the ball in the air with a big lead and now sees it rebound against them. And the score now with 126 remaining in the third quarter, the Falcons lead 31 to 10. Yeah, you saw Ray Buchanan there at the end and wanted to yell at the official. William White is getting him out of there. And he's claiming that there was that he was pushing off, but there was they were jostling back and forth. And in the course of a, of a route like that by Jefferson, you're going to get your push, you're going to get your shove both ways. And it turns into six. But it's the play action. And watch, watch Coach. He's up here. See, as you come inside, you have got to honor this. And then everything goes this way. Your linebackers follow it. Coach is wide open. Actually, the ball should have been thrown right there. Tough, and, tough coverage. Yeah. That's that's really tough coverage. First touchdown of the game by the Patriots, and it comes as a result of the turnover. And it's now 31 to 10. So a three touchdown game, and actually, hey, all these people leaving right now could be a little too soon. Oh. All it takes is one play, it's 14 points. You have a whole quarter to go. Hope these fans can get back in. Yeah. Kickoff uh, out of the end zone. Touchback and the Falcons will start from the 20 yard line. There you see uh, the fans walking out getting uh, to their cars and uh, when they do it'll be a uh, pretty long traffic jam on that. But that's good right now because as soon as Keith Brooking made that interception literally people stood up and rushed to the aisles and I and there was a there was a mass exodus. It, it was on, exodus. it was on cue. It was. It was amazing. It was like it was supposed to happen. But some guys see it and they're coming right back. They said, forget it. 21 points. Give me my blankie. I'm coming back. Yeah. Where's my seat? This guy's wearing his blankie. Falcons first down on the 20 yard line. Again, they have two tight ends. And the handoff is uh, to Jamal Anderson. And Anderson gets a couple of yards as we wind down to a minute remaining. Here in the third quarter, the Falcons have won 11 of their last 14, starting from the second half of last year when they were 6 and 2 to the 6 and 2 start this year. They have uh, been impressive, but now the uh, Patriots have a glimmer of hope here. Under a minute to go in the third, second and seven. Legs are down, and the pass is caught on the slant by Terrence Mathis. And Mathis, looking for running room, gets some and brings it out to the 45 and a gain of 22 yards. And let's see whether the Patriots were drawn by the hard count of Chris Chandler. Yeah, it was Wheeler, 97 inside, who jumped. So they'll decline that one. It'll be first and 10 from the 45. Offside, defense, number 92, penalty is. Well, he meant, he meant Wheeler, not, he meant. See, Collins never moved, so it was Wheeler, 97, and then Mathis working outside on Candy. Candy lets him get to the inside, and then the missed tackle turns it into a big one. Nice job by Ty Law of working off Tony Martin, be able to come back and make that play. Down to the final seconds of this third quarter. First down at the 45 of Atlanta. Jamal Anderson with the call and that will be the last play of the period and that is the end of the third quarter with the score the falcons 31 and the patriots 10 box nfl sunday will continue after a word from your local fox station matt and their 12 and 4 record only two teams the broncos and the packers last year's super bowl teams have a better mark not bad and you'd hate to be the poor sucker whose car this is Anytime you see those lights and a car behind it, that's not a good sign. Honey, I can't wait. I'm so chilly. I can't wait to get to our car. Second down and eight for Chandler. And the pass caught by Mathis still ongoing. Chris Candy has a shot at him and pushes him out of bounds. At about the 22-yard line. So that was a 21-yard pickup. So they're going to Mathis, and he's getting open. Yeah, and they're also protecting Chandler, and he's not afraid to keep coming back at it. 
Nice job of protection. They catch him working against Canny, and then watch him maneuver across the field. He'll lose some to gain some, and Candy takes the angle and forces him out of bounds at the end. Terrence Mathis has caught six passes for 99 yards. You see Curtis Martin right there? Get a little, little bit of a push there on Ty Law, just enough to let him spring. Falcons on the Patriot 31. Anderson bulls ahead and not much there. Well, we mentioned the Denver Broncos and uh, Pat Bolin, who uh, won a big vote, the Broncos did, so that they could build a new stadium. And he said the only facility that's worse than the, what we have at Mile High is in Foxborough. And, of course, uh, there's no question that uh, they need a new facility here. In Boston, if you know this city, it's politics, sports, and revenge. That's what it's all about. But you'd think that the, the smart politicians could work something out so that they get a new facility here. This paid advertisement brought to you by. <laughs> oh, it's, everyone knows. The election was Patriots over already. Needed. Second and seven. Second down and seven. Chandler on a screen pass to Anderson. And there goes the option pass downfield, intended for Mathis and Ty Law doing a great job staying with him. He wasn't fooled at all by that maneuver. Ty Law is better than pretty good. Ty Law is excellent. Ty Law can play with any any corner in the league and he's getting better and Jamal Anderson just seemingly stopped and he kind of he froze Chris Slade watch him stay with his coverage he's looking back but he smells a rat so he stayed that's outstanding it doesn't get better than that by Ty Long watch this he freezes Chris Slade and then he just heaves it up there that's a bona fide mallard he threw <laughs> third down and seven Here's the pressure put on, and the pass caught by Terrence Mathis. He's having a big series, and a first down to the 15-yard line. That was a gain of 14, so Terrence Mathis over the 100-yard mark in receiving in this game. And he's working there against Chris Candy. Chris Candy's kind of been having a rough, having a rough season. He's, I think he's going to be okay. He's got to learn how to play with what he has. You've got, you know, Clint Eastwood, man's got to know his limitations. He's got to know what he is and what he isn't and play more to his strengths and hide his weaknesses. And again, Chandler fell down. Looks like he got his feet caught up with Robbie Tobek, the center, going back. And Tobek. Uh, helped up by, or I should say Chandler, helped up by Kozlowski. We've seen that a few times this year with quarterbacks getting messed up. That now, way. You can watch him inside, watch his feet. And Tobek right there, see he takes a drop step with his right foot because he's trying to reach outside on Wheeler. And so he's got to get there as fast as he can. The interesting thing was Tobek, he became a robber. See, he was a Robbie for a lot of years. And then last year, he just kind of decided that, you know, he's too big to be Robbie, so he became Robbie. And he was the best man at Drew Bledsoe's wedding. They both were in Washington State. That's when he was still Robbie. Second and 11, the pass thrown underneath to Mathis, who makes the grab. And they can't stop this guy. Five-yard gain by Mathis and an injured Patriot That's down. Collins. Todd Collins. Yeah, he's not getting up in the coverage. Was, he was all over Mathis. Collins working to get up on his own power. He's a tough guy. You can see that he's got the knee brace going on down here. He's got assorted ailments all over, but you just keep on going. I'll tell you, this New England Patriot team knows that it's uh, going to be a marathon the second That's half of nice. this year. This is real nice right there hanging off his, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hanging well, off his, his face mask. I'm sure they'll towel that off before long. But the Patriots, one of four teams tied for first at five and three. And, they need to get their <laughs> offensive players back and to get their masks cleaned up. <laughs> they finally, somebody couldn't take it anymore and just wiped it off. I think it was you. Never bothered me. Third down and seven. Chandler. Now running. And Chandler. So a goof has been injury prone in the past and the Falcons sorely need him to stay healthy runs for the first down inside the five. I believe if I was one of his offensive linemen, I may have tackled him from behind. Don't you get it? When you play, we win. You're up by 21 points. Get down. Don't try to run through somebody. 
really taking a chance on that one, especially with a 31 to 10 lead. But you can't, you see, the problem is he's a competitor. Right. And that's not a problem, that's what you want. And you get out there and you just react. You want him healthy, though. Oh, absolutely. First and goal at the three. Three tight end. Play fake. Chandler. Toss. Touchdown. Ed Smith, the third tight end, grabs the touchdown catch. And the Falcons, still early here in the fourth quarter, now lead it 37 to 10. And a flag is down. Nice job of staying alive by Chandler. This is going to go against the Falcons. Offside, Offense, Offense number, 86, number 86. Five yard penalty, five yard penalty remains. remains. First down. First so down. scratch uh, Ed Smith from getting the touchdown. It would have been his uh, first of the season. We well, lined up on that left side. And he went, here he is, right here. He ends up dragging all the way across. I don't know. Run that one back. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see that at the start unless he. In fact, it would have been his first catch of the season. Instead, it's first and goal back to the eight yard line. He must have missed that one. And it's still 31 to 10. Maybe he just lined up offside. Jamal Anderson already has two touchdowns, drives it down to the two, and another penalty marker throw. Ted Johnson on the stop. That's going to be a hold, and they'll bring that one back. Let's watch, uh, let's watch Ed Smith on that previous play. Could have been that he lined up offside because certainly didn't see any movement. That could be, that could be it because the line would go right through here. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that's what it was. Holding, Holding. offense number 61, 10 yards, it remains first that down. That is uh, Robert, used to be Robbie Tobeck. I think I'm just going to go with Bob. Thank you. Bob is a mature or, Robbie. Or Bobby Tobeck. How about Roberto? So uh, two penalties marked off against the Falcons here. Here's Tobek right here, 61, and he's got the hand. He got that right hook right there. First and goal. From usually, the usually they leave them alone. When they get the hands, the offensive linemen are trained inside. He had inside the framework. They generally leave that go. that thing go. Well, they were down to the three. Now they're back to the 18. Still first and goal. Running play to Jamal Anderson. Nothing there. And uh, Chris Slade coming in to make the play. And it'll be second down and long as we have five minutes elapsed here in the fourth quarter with the Falcons in front of the Patriots, 31 to 10. Dick, the Falcons have never really let the Patriots in this game emotionally. They never let the crowd in. They came out and scored first, and then after they got the fumble recovery and the 14-point lead, it's been kind of just a blah day. And they're the blah fans right yes. now who have remained. 12th play of the drive on second down. Anderson, and uh, we're going to have another flag. This one will be against the Falcons, I believe. False start, apparently. Prior to snap, false start, offense number seven. Bob Whitfield specifically. So backward they go, the Falcons. They had first and goal at the three, and now they'll be back to the 22. In the interim, or in the interim, I should say, uh, the clock is now down under 10 minutes. And so they're getting what they want out of it. Even if they go backwards another 15 yards, they're still going to continue to run that, that clock down. The Falcons have to feel pretty good about, about obviously the start and coming away up here in New England if they can continue this for another nine minutes. It's a big win. Second and goal at the 22-yard line, and there's the pass to Santiago, and he's over for the touchdown. O.J. Santiago, his second touchdown catch of the day, and it doesn't matter whether it's Second and long, third and long, Chandler found 88. Dick, were my ears, my ears wrong, or did Santiago just do some Talk kind of falcon Cheryl. bird thing there? He was kind of flapping and I heard a, like a bird. If he did, that's pretty sorry. Oh. 
That's a big bird. There's only one big bird I know, and he resides in Sesame Street. There's Chandler. Well, he know. came with a blitz, and they, they picked it up fine. <laughs> and then Santiago got down there and flapped his way into the end zone. Now you know two big birds. Extra point by Morton Anderson is good. And the Falcons now lead it 38 to 10. And the beat goes on for the Atlanta Falcons. Listen to this. That is the sorriest sounding Falcon I have ever seen. But what a great job that our Mikes did down in the field to get uh, Santiago, whatever that is. That's calling? It's not calling, is Sounds it? of the game. That sounds of the we game. Call it sounds of the, the uh, I don't know what you call uh, it. Here's the kickoff, and Derek Cullors returning it for the Patriots. We're down 38 to 10. Color is still going. And finally is down at the 24-yard line. Timeout, just under nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. It's been all Atlanta today. To the seven to eight. So the Dolphins how about this would uh, take the lead. Yeah, that is the other story, and that is uh, a league story, how the Vikings are getting all they can handle from the Saints. How about Detroit coming up with nine points against that Philadelphia defense that was Actually, the defense didn't play well, that bad. How about Philly getting 10 against Detroit? Yeah, defense. Philly's Philly's offense was non-existent on Monday. First down, Patriots on the 24-yard line. Cedric Shaw is the running back out of the shotgun. Drew Bledsoe, and the pass is caught. It's a first down. Tony Simmons makes the grab at the 42-yard line, and the walking wounded continued for the Patriots. Uh, Henry Thomas was a question mark prior to the game, and now uh, he's. He's on crutches on the sideline. It looks like uh, looks like that xylocaine wore off. 18-yard pickup on that last pass. Incomplete to Sean Jefferson. Patriots are looking to get their wide receivers back, and in the next several weeks, they expect that Terry Glenn and uh, Vincent Brisby may return. Troy Brown would be a key man as well, and they didn't play today without or they played without Willie McGinnis. Their top pass rusher. They need their men back for the big stretch drive. Oh, Cedric Shaw, nice clobbered by Chris Cornelius Bennett. Cornelius Bennett. What a Bennett. break on the ball. Cornelius Bennett saw that thing before before Cedric Shaw ever saw it. He was reading Shaw like Bledsoe was. Listen to this and we'll watch this thing. Here he is, right here. Ooh. There's the sound of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody even caught getting up off of that one. Third down and 10. Bledsoe, nowhere to go. And it's been all game long. Fumble uh, any time that Bledsoe has tried to throw the ball down the field, the coverage has been all over. Five sacks today. Watch Booker outside on Simmons. There's nothing there. He tries to look to the other side to Jefferson working on Buchanan. There's nothing there. There's a safety to the middle of the field. And then look, he's looking there. He wants to find somebody. There's time, but Chucky Smith, who really has given Bruce Armstrong a rough day. I mean, Smith has played right. well all game long. We really haven't said much about him. And Antonio Edwards following up, so it's fourth down, and Tom Tupa will kick it away. Todd Kitchen back deep. Fair catch. On the 23, we'll take a break here at Foxborough Stadium with the Falcons leading the Patriots 38 to 10. <laughs> 38 to 10, and uh, we have seen some uh, big hits against uh, the New England Patriots, and there have been down the history a lot of uh, big hits against uh, the New England Patriots. By the way, the Falcons have a new quarterback. Tony Graziani has come in. First down at the 22-yard line. Gary Downs and Ken Oxendine are the running back. And the hand is to Ken Oxendine. Well, one of the great hits against the Patriots uh, was uh, performed by my partner. And let's go back to the 1985 AFC Divisional Playoff. Sam Seals fumble on the kickoff recovered by the Pats. Jim Bowman for the winning score. Afterwards, however, a scuffle broke out. And that's right, 
my partner Matt Millen <laughs> of the Raiders and then Patriots general manager Pat Sullivan and a great right cross <laughs> one of the great hits of all time well Matt. you know what happened I think I knocked the silver spoon right out of his mouth <laughs> I've never met him you know I've never met well, I don't think he wants to meet you. I would like to meet him. I don't even know what the guy looks like. I just smacked him. Second down and seven. Do you remember the circumstances of that? You want to retell well, us? The interesting thing. Look at look at this. Uh, look, this uh, don't do this at home, okay? That's <laughs> not good. This poor Pat Sullivan had been heckling Howie Long all game long, and, and I, I actually never really knew that. I knew that afterwards. And then what happened as the game went on, he came over to Howie. And honest, to, and honest to goodness, I thought it was a fan out of the stands, and Pat Sullivan came okay. over. If you knew it was the I, owner of the team, what would you have done? I probably would have hit him with two hands <laughs> instead, you know, because they just beat us. They just beat us, and it was, uh, it was not fun. Second down and 12, and here is Ken Oxendine on the rush. Oxendine, a seventh-round draft pick from Virginia Tech, and, uh, you know, uh, that was a, a memorable moment. <laughs> I got some of the greatest Football letters. history. I got some of the greatest letters from New England fans you've ever read. They were, they were, there was a lot on my side, and there was a lot not on my side. <laughs> but it was uh, funny, to say the least. Well, you, you, you've always been an instinctive player. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. The interesting thing was I was walking with a bunch of the Patriots, and nobody stopped me. They let me go. There's a commentary there. Third down and nine on the 23-yard line. Graziani in relief of Chandler with a screen pass to Oxendine. And Oxendine has the first down at the 34-yard line. I think the story, Dick, as you look at this game, really was the coverage by the Coverage by the Atlanta Falcons one or or the flip side of that is the inability of the receivers of the Patriots to get open because clearly Bledsoe had time initially but the, the sacks that he had came when they weren't able to get open down he, the field and he took advantage today. yes yes he did and he, you see through the two picks he also took off and ran for a first down to keep things going he had time was able to make some throws starting backfield uh, Jamal Anderson along with Bob Christian is back in there now first down at the 34 and a whistle delay of the game against uh, the Falcons five yard marked off rough day for Drew Bledsoe and in his defense did not have his receiving core and that has been the problem the last several weeks and the Patriots know they're not going to make any ground in a very tight race in the AFC East until they get the likes of uh, Terry Glenn, Troy Brown, and Vincent Brisby back. That plus uh, the other thing is they need to get their defensive line back because they, they can't continue to go out on the field with not a, a pass rush that they can count on. First down and 15. Graziani hands off to Jamal Anderson. As the clock runs under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Falcons defense has a good reason to smile today. Travis Hall getting back in action, and he has made an impact. And he will. The more the more healthy he can get, there's Shane Dronet saying hi. How you doing, Shane? Good to see you. Travis Hall's right there as well. I think Chuck Smith played himself a good game, and I really, I, it's my fault for not really kind of looking at him a little bit more today because I think he gave Bruce, Bruce Armstrong all he could handle over there in that right side. Second and 13. Here is Anderson, and not much there. Well, come Anderson has gone over 100, by the way. He's come off of a knee and, and, and done an outstanding job. Here's Anderson, who has carried 32 times for 104 yards and two touchdowns today, so another banner game for Jamal for uh, Jamal Anderson seven and two seven and two and Cornelius Bennett is letting you know and now the next hurdle for them is their biggest one you can see is a sixth 100, 100 yard game this season but the biggest hurdle remember at the start of the game we talked about a ladder before you can consider that and this was a major step for them to beat the Patriots on the road 
against a good Patriot team. Yes, they are depleted, but they still had to go out and beat them, and really they dominated. But the biggest step on the ladder is San Francisco. Ball bounding away from Chris Kenny, and a loose ball, and the Falcons get it back. So this is a nightmarish game for the Patriots, just as the Falcons experienced it a couple of weeks ago against the Jets. It was Bob Christian who recovered the fumble. Actually, it was a muff. You got it. Not a fumble. He did not have possession. Therefore, a muff recovered by Christian. Muffage. Ball comes down, and he just, just misplayed it. He backed up on it. The ball takes a funny bounce. Christian, Christian, though, it didn't bounce funny for him. Everything that could go right for Atlanta today has gone right. the New England Patriots and it has one, been a laugher for them today 38 to 10 with 251 remaining in the fourth quarter and following the uh, fumble of the muff by Candy the Falcons with the first down on the 14 yard line Tony Graziani the quarterback filling in for Chandler in the handoff to Ken Oxendine and nothing there. Let's check the scores. The Vikings have uh, taken a one touchdown lead. The Dallas Cowboys game is over. They defeated the Giants 16 to 6. And uh, the uh, St. Louis Rams defeated the Chicago Bears 20 to 12. And uh, Indianapolis coming back a bit against the Miami Dolphins. Chicago kind of had things rolling along until they lost Kramer. Stenstrom, I believe, played that game yes, today. And it's, uh, it, uh, obviously, I, I made a big difference because Kramer, Kramer was pretty efficient. Oxendine slips as we we'll wind down to the two-minute warning. So for the fans that are still here at Foxborough Stadium, it'll be over soon. We'll be right back. Victory with a 38 to 10 lead uh, that would put them in first place. The 49ers will play Carolina at home later. And of course, the big showdown next week. And Matt talked all day. What do the Falcons need to do to upend the 49ers in the showdown next week? I think the first thing they have to do is have their secondary play next week against San Francisco like they did today. That's the biggest thing. And then I think when they get a healthy Travis Hall, that makes a difference. He needs to play down in and down out to be able to nullify some of the things San Francisco does. Third down and 12 on the 16 of New England, and the handoff is to Harold Green. So the two-minute warning. Now the Patriots will use a timeout here with 1.53 on the clock. And uh, we have some time now to thank some people who played a role in the telecast today and hope you enjoyed it. Today's game produced by Richard Zients and directed by Artie Kempner. The pregame show was produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer is Bill Brown and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And thanks to our technical crew led by Dean Walker and to our guys up here in the booth, Chris Visser and Dave Corris for their help today as the Atlanta Falcons went on the road and uh, crushed the New England Patriots. Nancy Bernstein and Peter Fleckner manning everything out in Los Angeles where Joe Buck and Ron Pitts doing the highlights there. Here is Morton Anderson's field goal attempt and it's good. A 32 yard field goal for Anderson. That is his third field goal of the game and the Falcons now lead by a score of 41 to 10. Dick, you know, we looked earlier at those standings with Atlanta at top at seven and two and Carolina at the bottom at one and seven. There are a lot of people at the start of the season that would have that would have reversed that. They would have flipped it, right? Yes, they would have. And uh, what a job that Dan Reeves has done with his staff. When you talk about Dan Reeves, you're talking about that whole coaching staff. And now what they have going for him, which is the hardest thing to get when you come into a program like Atlanta had, and that is confidence and belief that you can win. This is a group that thinks they can whoop anybody's rear end, and that's a major, major difference. They have a world of confidence, and the 41 points allowed by the Patriots, the most since December of 1995, and uh, a lot of those points were set up, of course, by the defensive effort. It was an all-round terrific effort today by the Atlanta Falcons. 
who will go to seven and two on the year. And uh, their 41 points are the second most that they've scored this year. They crushed Carolina back in October, 51 to 23. So this team can roll it up. Here's the kickoff, Teddy Brewski. Right? We haven't mentioned his name, and last week he did everything yeah. against the Colts. And he was all over the place. And if there's a better football man in the league than Brewski, hey Brewski, I haven't heard it. Oh, just get me a Brewski. <laughs> get me a Brewski has such a good meaning when watching a football game. And at 46 remaining in this one, and uh, in a season in which the uh, AFC has uh, had the big edge over the NFC by 10 games, this is a shocker with the NFC winning this one 41 to 10. Scott Zolak is in at quarterback, and uh, Zolak goes underneath to uh, Cedric Shaw in the tackle. Well, well, the last time the Falcons played the Patriots here, was the last game that Drew Bledsoe did not start. It was Scott Zolak. And it was uh, Bledsoe who then played the next game and started 53 in a row, including today. And that's the longest streak in the AFC. I got news for you. Scott Zolak wasn't going to make a difference today. Incomplete. Those, those receivers, <laughs> those, and he, look, even at the end of the game, all he has is to throw underneath. They're not going to give it to him, first of all. But when they did have a chance to give it to him, receivers couldn't shake anybody. He credit the secondary of the Atlanta Falcons for turning in themselves a nice job. Ray Buchanan on one corner, Booker also did a nice job, and then uh, that really was the difference of the game. Out of the shotgun on third down and eight, Zolak incomplete. And it's fourth down. Well, Drew Bledsoe had to go to the air often today with his team down early. Falcons led by 28 to 3 at the half. Bledsoe 19 of 34 for 229 yards. Had a touchdown pass and threw an interception. Fourth down and eight. And the pass is complete. Scott Zolak makes the completion to Tony Simmons. As we have a minute to go and some of the youngsters staying here to the end here. Patriots lining up with under a minute to go. Those kids finally got some good seats. They came down from the 500 level all the way down. <laughs> Zolak incomplete to Shaw out of the backfield. New England will drop to five and four on the year. And uh, the Dolphins winning today against Indianapolis six and three. And uh, the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets coming up in the second half uh, today later on. And the Bills with Doug Flutie. That's quite a story, huh? They're playing very well. Zolak on second down. Incomplete. There's a flag down over there also, right by Simmons. But Flutie, see, I think the thing to remember about Flutie, he's gone for however many years, I believe eight years or something. But in the interim, the league changed. When he left, you didn't want a quarterback who moved around. You wanted him to sit inside. Let's go against the, Bill, uh, against the, uh, the Patriots. But since he's come back, the league has gone to the point where a lot of quick passes, uh, you have to have a quarterback with mobility to give you. Illegal touching of the forward pass. Offense number 81, who had been out of bounds, out of bounds. And was first to touch the ball. Simmons step out of Tony bounds, so he can't be the first one back. Third down, third down. Now, what, what about the, the Bills naming Flutie to their quarterback for the rest of the year? Well, I think in this league, every now and then you get, well, it's not usually every year, you get somebody who gets a hot hand who has a little bit of that. Yeah, a little magic dust sprinkled on him. I think Flutie's got that on him right now. And so I I think uh, I think Coach Wade Phillips is just is just going with the hot hand. He's saying, why not? This guy's turned us around. We've got these wins. We've beaten good teams. San Francisco, one of them. And so we're gonna just continue to go with them. Plus it also it also gives Johnson a chance to learn more of the offense, get a little bit more comfortable with it, and also get healthy. Rob Johnson, who was assigned for big money out of Jacksonville, and now uh, Doug Flutie's the quarterback. Zolak running, and it completes it to Cedric Shaw. Shaw, a little magic himself after the catch. And uh, Ray Buchanan finally brings him down with under a half a minute to go. 41 to 10. Timeout, New England. So the Patriots... Uh, 
Want to score again before the end of this one, but it's safely into the coffers of the Atlanta Falcons with an impressive road victory today. And I'm impressed with the way Dan Reed. It's always it's always fun to win games like this when you have time to get on the sideline and enjoy it while while it's still going on. Zolak going into the end zone. Intended for Ladd. Anthony Ladd, the intended receiver, incomplete. Tried to run by Michael Booker. Number 20, the corner. 14 seconds to go. And you know what? The Falcons took the crowd out completely. Early. early. Not only did they take him out, they sent them home. Nobody yeah. here. And when that Michael Brooking, when that in interception happened, no, he's not happy about something. When that interception from Brooking happened, people just left. Point has deflected away, and uh, him and it a was bad Devin spot. Bush. Hit Devin Bush right in the hands. But this is the best start the Falcons have ever had. And Dan Reeves, second year as head coach, he finished six and two in the second half after a one and seven start. And six and two this first half and a big victory here. But he's coaching on the sideline as if the score were tied. Yeah, look at that look on his face. He wasn't very pleased with John Burroughs. And get your rear end out of there. Well, Chuck Smith just came unabated to the quarterback. I think the National Football League made that word up just for that rule. It's a great word. Because you never heard it before until that. You know, it's not like you said, hey, don't run after your sister unabated. Get back. It's right. just happened in this league or how many people are abated defense number 90 <laughs> right. unabated to the goal see there we go <laughs> five yard penalty third down i've never heard them say abated never have either or baited third down <laughs> and <laughs> i've heard of aborted which <laughs> looked like he was <laughs> zolak time running out and he's tackled by Chuck Smith. That'll be six sacks officially by the Atlanta Falcons today. Lester Archambault forced it up inside and Chuck Smith made it, but again, coverage down the field enabled the whole thing to happen. And the Patriots call another timeout with you know, I think, four seconds to go. You know what I think? I think that Pete Carroll is a little bit mad because of that last field goal, because I would be. There's no need to kick. It was 38-10. Just let it go. I but think you're right. He kicked that field goal, and I think he's saying, all right, I'm going to use all my timeouts and try to score on you. Yeah, that has to be the only rationale, and you're absolutely right. It's 38-10, to 10, and uh, Morton Anderson kicked the field goal, so uh, what's good for the goose? He's looking. See if he, hey, if you can, if you can see yourself, wave. Now, if you're looking at this game, move your hand. If not, if not, that means you're watching another network. And get that guy off ours. You shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> All right. This may be the last play of the game. And the pass is intercepted by Eugene Robinson as the game ends. And that's it from Foxborough Stadium. The final score, the Atlanta Falcons 41, the New England Patriots 10. We'll be back after these messages.